Welcome back to Way of the Ranch and on today's very special video I'm going to be showing you how to remove and install your tapered roller bearings on your car, your truck, or even your trailer. So, let's get rolling. Now in a previous job and a video that I already made for you guys, I showed you how to disassemble, clean, inspect, and re-hand pack those tapered roller bearings and get it back together on the vehicle. The only thing we didn't do on that job was replace the actual bearing and more importantly, knock out the outer bearing race and install a new one. So I thought that would be the video today. I'll show you that little part. Uh, that way you could do the whole job in case you had to replace the wheel bearings. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I will put a link above for you guys to check that out. Uh, you should probably watch that before you do this one. Once you've taken off your wheel hub from your vehicle, you might have just a small little wheel hub like this, or it could have a disc or a drum incorporated right into your wheel hub. Either way, take it off your vehicle and then you're ready to start this. Now, once you take your taper roller bearing out and you have cleaned it and inspected it and decided that because due to rust or corrosion or pitting or damage to the cage or to the outer race itself, that this has to be replaced, the first key thing is you cannot replace just this part with a new bearing. You have to replace it as a complete set. So that means changing out this outer race as well. Now, once this outer race comes out, this is what it looks like. But for right now, it's trapped in there and this is what we're trying to get out in this video. So step one is if we're gonna knock out this outer bearing race, we have to give it room to be able to get out. If I flip this over and just hammer it against the table like that, this bearing is gonna hit the table and, and not come out. So we have to have some room for it. So in your shop or your garage, you should always have kind of like some chunks of wood or some dunnage. And we can support that wheel hub, flip it over. And now we can support that and hammer the bearing race out with lots of room underneath. Now the next thing you need to know is how do you actually get this bearing race out? So I've got a little light here so we can see a little better. And looking from the other side, you can see that down in the hole there, there is a notch that's made right into the casting of this wheel hub. That is the outer bearing race right there. This is also the spot where you're gonna be able to get a drift punch in here or a pin punch and a hammer and drive out that race. Now, if there's one of these, there's one exactly 180 degrees from it back here so that you can tap evenly to get that bearing race to come out evenly and not crooked. If you only hammer on one side and keep pounding away on the one side, it's going to wedge itself and cause damage in the bore that this is supposed to sit in. All right, now once you find your notches, you're gonna to wanna to make it so that the wood is supporting where you're hammering, right? If I left it here and hammered this way, this part's gonna rock up and out of the wood. So we're gonna turn this so that it's facing the wood. And because we're gonna be using a tool with force, a hammer and punches, we're gonna put on some safety glasses so that we don't get anything in our eyes. And then when you go to punch this out, you're not gonna be slamming it all on one side. So just a light tap this way, light tap this way, light tap, and just keep alternating until it goes out. And if you're never unsure, you can flip it over and take a look and see if it's crooked. If it is, you're gonna to wanna to hit it on the high side so to get it to even out, and then you go back to just alternating. So one hit like this, go to the other side. And like I said, not crazy big hits. You should feel it move a touch. And as long as you keep feeling it move, should be fine. And you just keep going until it falls out. Just like that. Now with that outer race removed, you can see really obvious here, these are those little cutouts in the casting for you to be able to hammer out that race. Now, before you put in your new stuff, make sure you clean out this, make sure there's no burrs or any damage from when you removed it. Right, cool, it's time to put in our new bearings. Now before you do that, it's always a good idea to double check that it matches the old parts we just removed. So if you clean up the side of the bearing, there should be a number, make sure those numbers match. Now, if you can't read those numbers, you will have to measure it to confirm it's a good fit. So get yourself something like a digital caliper and you're gonna check the outside diameter of the outer race, the thickness of the outer race, and the inside diameter of the bearing itself. And if that all matches up, it should be a good fit. Now, 
Don't forget, we have to hand pack these with grease before they go in as well. So make sure you watch that video that I mentioned at the beginning of this one. You go to install these outer bearing races. There's a couple of tricks that you really only learn through experience. However, I'd like to share with you guys so that you have an easier time doing this. Now, the very first thing is it is very easy to get this upside down and start installing it and not notice it until it's too late. So make sure that when you are installing these that the thinner side, so the tapers coming up to a thinner lip, is facing outwards. That's the proper orientation. Now the next thing is when you're going to put this in here, if you decide that you're just going to tap on the bearing to get it in, it is immediately going to cock at an angle and then if you keep hammering you're going to cause some damage inside the bore because this bearing is harder than the hub assembly. It'll start gouging into there. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks to keep this nice and straight as you're pounding it in. Now the absolute best way of doing this is actually having the right tools. So this is a bearing race and seal driver kit and it's for this purpose. So if we open this up, you can see that we have a bunch of these aluminum pucks that help drive in the outer bearing races and the seals without causing any damage. So there is a little handle, kind of uh, installer handle here. And then you fit the appropriate puck for your job. So for example, this outer race, this fits right here perfectly. There's a little taper here to sit right against that tapered surface in there. And then the other thing is this diameter here on the puck is actually a little bit skinnier in diameter than this. So that allows you to drive it down into a hole without this part catching in that hole. And so once you got the right part, you have it on this side for driving in the outer bearing races. And then you have it like this to drive the seals because they're just a flat surface that you don't want any damage to happen to them. So I put this in here. Screw in the little screw here, and then your tool is ready to use. To install this, just make sure that this is sitting in square to start, okay? Put your installer tool like this on top, and then use your hammer, and you're gonna hammer on the end here. Now, same thing, we're not driving this with huge, massive hammer hits, we wanna go slow, and if we see it being crooked at all, then we have to address that. So, light little tap and it looks like it's going in straight perfectly, which is great. So I would just keep going. And if you listen to the sound of your hammer hits, it has a certain kind of tone and a sound or a volume to it. Once it bottoms out down there, it will sound a little bit louder. And um, that's telling you that you have bottomed out and there's no need to hit it anymore. Now, if it does go crooked, you can kind of just put this at an angle so that where you're hitting is only hitting the high spot here and uh, that way you can get it kind of back to being flat and then just continue going straight. So keep going, listen for the tone to change as we bottom it out. Right there, you can hear the sound change, so that means we've bottomed out. Now if you don't have that kit, you can still get this done, it's just a little bit more finicky. So you take your outer bearing race, you put it on top, and instead of just hitting on the side, you need something to go over the top. So a piece of flat hardwood, put it over the top and then hit right in the center, slight taps. And if it goes crooked, which it probably will a bit doing this method, you have to focus on the high side. So right over here, you tap it just until it is even again, and then go back to the center and start driving it down. Now, if you use this method, you will have another problem arise where the wood will eventually stop going down anymore because it's hitting the top surface of your wheel hub. So you need something to be able to drive that down in without damaging it. And here's your second trick. Whenever you do one of these jobs, always keep these outer bearing races for this exact purpose. If you take this and you put that down on top, you can drive it down into the bottom, but this will get stuck. So the trick is you take your old bearing race and you grind the outside diameter couple thousandths of an inch less. So you can use a grinder, a die grinder, a little two inch roll lock disc, anything you can to get this a little bit skinnier than the original bore size. And then you can put that down over the top and use it with the wood to drive it right down to the bottom. And when you go to take it out, it will just come out instead of being stuck. If you don't grind it, it will end up being stuck in the hole and then there's another issue to get it out after. So there's another trick for you. Now that you got the one side done, don't forget you got to do the other side as well. So from this side, you're going to be pounding out the entire bearing, inner outer race all at once, plus the actual seal itself. And the seal has to be replaced every time it gets knocked out. So don't you reuse the old one. 
and don't forget to repack your new bearing. Otherwise, the assembly on this side is exactly the same. The only thing different is that when you go to put in the seal itself, you gotta flip the puck around so that you have a nice flat surface here, so that way you don't damage the thin sheet metal and rubber seal. And um, this one is very picky for making sure that you have it straight. So if there's any high sides, make sure you knock them down and keep it even as you drive this nice and straight in. All right, that's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a gearhead. This time on how to knock out and install your tapered roller bearing outer races. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about what we did here today, just put them down in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, why don't you follow us on Instagram. Till next time, take it easy.